Courage is what it takes to stand up and speak. Courage is also what it takes to sit down and listen. Good morning, sergeants. I'm Staff Sergeant Franklin. Welcome to this uh, briefing. The overall classification of this briefing is unclassified. I'd like to welcome my SGL, Staff Sergeant Fulfer, for attending this brief. The purpose of this briefing is to educate you on the importance of conflict management and why you, as a leader, need to be aware of conflict in your, in your units and formations and resolve them as necessary. All right, here's a quick agenda for today. We're going to be talking about what conflict management is and what conflict is, the types of conflict, the causes of conflict, and resolving and managing conflict in your units. Conflict management is an area that all leaders need to be aware of. Conflict in a unit, if not managed or resolved, can lead to devastating effects on your unit, your formation, uh, that can be your home life or your work life. It can affect the morale, efficiency, and confidence of the soldiers in your formation. Leaders need to understand, identify, and manage conflict at all levels. <clears throat> all right, so what is conflict and conflict management? So conflict is, occurs when people disagree about ideas or feel their interests are being threatened. Conflict does not require the involvement of two people. So it can be one person being in conflict with more people and they don't even realize it. It could be a group of people or even multiple groups of people being in conflict with each other. It's not always going to be conflict between one or two people. It might not be based on facts. So a lot of times conflict can get started based on opinions or differing values, norms, beliefs. It's not always going to be based on facts. Maybe this person has a personality conflict with that person and that can lead to conflict. And oftentimes, one person might not realize that they are in conflict with uh, another person. So maybe that person got slighted at work. Um, maybe they had some sort of issue during the day that led to some conflict and they don't even understand or know that the other person's upset with them and they're basically in conflict and they don't realize it. Conflict management. So conflict management is tools or strategies that you can use to resolve and manage conflict. Leaders should identify and resolve conflict as early as possible so it doesn't become a bigger issue in the end. We're going to be talking about two types of conflict today, work task-based conflict and relationship or individual-based conflict. Okay, so task, work-based conflict occurs when employees disagree. So that could be in a civilian workplace, that could be in the unit, that could be anywhere that two employees are working together. It could be a difference, in, difference of opinions about goals. So maybe one person thinks uh, the goal for the company should be A, another person thinks it's B, while a third person thinks it's C. Or maybe soldiers think uh, that the end state for their unit at the end of that quarter should be in a different, different um, end state than another person, and that can definitely lead to conflict, and those two people might have, to, uh, might have differing visions for the organization. Tasks, maybe one person thinks their way is the best way, and because of that, they're not going to agree with anybody else's opinion or way to get things done, and that can cause conflict. Decisions being made, so maybe one person comes up with a different solution, Another per person comes up with a second solution, and the third person comes up with a third solution. And all of these different individuals have differing opinions about their solutions. Maybe they're attached to them, they're bought into them, and they don't want to hear anyone else's solutions, which can also lead to conflict. Work-based conflicts can be beneficial to organizations. So when you do have positive and healthy conflict, it, it can lead to improved decision making. So instead of those people being bought into their ideas or their opinions or their solutions, they actually sit down talk to the other people or, per, or person, and actually uh, try to come up with the best solution for the company or the unit. It can eliminate redundancies in the unit, and it can also increase, you can get increased commitment from your employees. So if your employees feel like their opinions and um, ideas are being valued and taken into consideration, then they're actually going to feel a little bit more committed to work and want to be there, and you're going to get more commitment from them to you and to the leaders and to their fellow soldiers. All right, so task conflict is pretty normal in the workplace. It's going to happen almost every day. That's not, not unusual, and it's not always going to be very detrimental. However, individual-based conflict can be very detrimental to the workplace and to your unit. <clears throat> Relationship or individual-based conflict. So this takes place more on an emotional or personality level between two different employees. So you could have personality differences between employees, and that's probably going to be one of the biggest causes of conflict between two or more soldiers. So maybe one person was brought up another way. Maybe they believe certain things. Maybe they're a homebody where another soldier is a soldier who likes to go out and party on the weekends. 
simple things like this, just overall personality differences, can lead to conflict between those two people. All right, sometimes employees or soldiers might get annoyed with other people. Maybe that soldier does or says something frequently that annoys another soldier, and over time that can kind of just eat away at that soldier, and that can definitely lead to conflict. Employees might have underlying tension with each other. Maybe something happened off of work or outside of work that led to tension between those two people. That can bleed over and cause conflict in the workplace. And poor leadership can aggravate issues. Later on, we're going to talk about some ways to manage conflict, but poor leadership can definitely be a cause of conflict at the personality level or individual level. All right, now we're going to be talking about the causes of conflict. Work-based cause, uh, causes, sometimes there might be poor management and unclear job roles. If two people are doing the same thing and they don't have clear guidance from their leader, that can cause conflict. Like, why are you doing the same thing that I'm doing? This is the way I want to do it. The way you want to do it is wrong. That can definitely cause conflict. Unfair treatment or picking favorites by supervisors or commanders or leaders. So if you have a favorite as a leader and your soldiers know about that, that's, it, that's going to cause conflict and resentment in your other soldiers, your other subordinates. All right, poor communication and a poor work environment. So if you're not clearly communicating to your subordinates and they're unsure of what's going on that day, that week, that month, that quarter, that year, that's going to lead to, lead to a little bit of uncertainty, which can also lead to conflict between you and them. Bullying and harassment, so that's never okay in the workplace, and that can definitely lead to conflict. If somebody's being bullied or harassed in the workplace, that's probably a good chance that they're going to have a little bit of conflict with that people, that, those people or that person. Unrealistic deadlines or expectations. So if you give your subordinates an unrealistic deadline or have some unrealistic um, expectations for those soldiers, that's going to create some stress on those soldiers, which can lead to conflict between you and them. All right, some more individual-based causes of conflict. You might have some misunderstandings and false assumptions. A lot of times, instead of people trying to get that clear guidance and ask questions, they're just going to leave that meeting or that brief with a little bit of gray area, and that can lead to conflict down the, down the line. Cultural, age, and generational gaps or differences can also lead to conflict. Maybe you have a 50-year-old infantryman in your platoon, and then you have a 20-year-old right out of high school or college infantryman. They're going to think about the world a lot differently than each other, and that can lead to conflict. Different approaches or methods or ideas. One person might have one way of doing things. That's how they've always done it. Another, another person might come in from another unit with their way of doing it. Those two people might butt heads, and that can lead to conflict in your unit. Differences in values and norms. So people might, again, be brought up a little bit differently. They might have different values, and they might have different norms. They might expect different things from different people. And when they don't get those norms or values from other people, that can also lead to conflict. All right, so now we're going to talk about five different conflict management strategies that you maybe can use as a leader to help resolve the conflict. Two of them are good strategies. The rest are strategies you probably want to avoid, but they are out there. The first one is a competing strategy, using your power or authority to get your way. So you could either do that via your rank, uh, physical power, your position, or just whatever, whatever type of hold you might have over that person. It may be emotional power. That is, you're using the competing strategy to basically get your way because you, you can. So in that mechanism or that strategy, it's an I win, you lose. So that person could be compared to a shark. They're basically going to get their way because they can. They're not going to listen to the person or, or even give them the light of day. So you definitely want to avoid using your power or authority to get your way. The avoiding strategy. So I'm going to be quiet and listen. It's not that big a deal. I'm just going to avoid the situation and kind of pretend like it's not there. So individuals attempt to reduce or get rid of the conflict by denying it exists. So that person could be compared to a turtle. So instead of confronting that individual or even having that conflict, they're just going to avoid it altogether, and the conflict kind of won't even be there. And this type of strategy, it's a you lose, I lose strategy. Accommodating people play down their differences uh, in a belief that it is better to go along than to get along. So in this strategy, instead of that person actually sitting down and confronting that soldier again, they're basically just going to let them complain or let them do or let them, let them get their way just because they don't want to deal with the conflict. They don't want to have that confrontation. So this person could be compared to a teddy bear. Compromise, it allows all parties to reach an agreement with what everyone would maybe get a little bit out of it, but not the best, maybe not the best idea. So everyone's going to leave here being a little bit satisfied. This person could be compared to the fox. 
a little more intelligent. They actually want to kind of get some good results here, but at the same time, they don't want to have that big confrontation. And the last one is going to be compromising. It allows all parties to reach an agreement with which all would be somewhat satisfied. So this person could be compared to an owl. So instead of having that confrontation or getting into it with each other, hey, let's actually sit down. Maybe my idea is good. Maybe it's not the best. Maybe your idea is good. Maybe it's not the best. Let's actually sit down, use our big brains, come up with a really good solution together. We're going to, comp or we're going to collaborate and actually come up with the best idea that we can. So compromising and collaborating, those are the two best strategies that you as a leader want to use. You definitely want to avoid the competing. You don't want to use your power or authority to get your way. You always want to make sure your soldiers have their chance to speak, to voice their opinions, and voice their ideas. So in summary, conflict in a unit, if not managed or resolved, can have devastating effects on your unit. So you definitely want to identify that conflict early, understand that it's going on, and resolve it as quickly as possible before it can fester and become a bigger issue later on. So the two types of conflict that can lead to issues, again, are the task-based or work-based conflict and the relationship, relationship or individual-based conflict. So again, there are several ways to resolve conflict, and you guys want to do your best to try to do the collaborating and compromising strategies as much as possible and definitely avoid the competing strategy. So leader, you need to do, as a leader, you need to do your best to maintain a positive working environment where your subordinates' opinions and values are valued and they think that they are a contributing member of the organization and they want to be there, create that positive work environment. If you do that, that's going to lead to a lot less conflict overall. Are there any questions? This concludes my brief.